continue with the desired action uh, described in the, in the procedure. Um, one of the very, very important uh, things to do with drug drilling, which is itself neglected, uh, is um, to document the results and, and utilize the, the, the things you can get after the program. This is basically to, to be able to interpret send it into a physiological model. You need to um, you need to get as much results out of it as possible. This can be done uh, with different software and, uh, and systems on the TVM, so that's something we're going to discuss a bit later. Because when you look into the geological models, you want to, to create some appropriate patterns. Uh, it's very what the output you get is, is very decide, is very uh, dependent on the input you put in, and then you want to collect as much as possible. Based on the results you have in the velocity model, you, you make and you decide the grounding pattern. The size of the of the pattern is usually uh, based on uh, on under the last of the investigations in advance and the results from the project together. Um, the patterns are often also uh, described in the procedure prior to the project. The basic principle uh, is to create a grouping umbrella in front of the uh, tunnel. Um, these are usually done uh, 18 to, or approximately 20 meters in, in front of the TBM. You uh, you want to hit this, uh, this continuous piece you have in front of the TBM, of the TBM. and uh, fill them up with uh, a pressure graft. Pressure graph to create a, the umbrella around so you can excavate into the dry material. Uh, usually, the, the, the size of criteria when grouting is the grouting pressure because it, it tells you something about how much grout you put into it and how much of, of discontinuity you fill in. But it's, uh, the umbrella is illustrated in the pictures below. The ground hole lengths are usually between 18 and 24 meters. Um, you have an overlap between 5 to 10 meters, so that means that usually you do a, do a round of uh, free routing every 10 to 20 meters when you you want to to do it systematically. And hopefully when uh, you have dry material when you go into the end, at least the water pressure should be reduced dramatically. You can then grout with, with, uh, we're not going into detail on what you can grout with, but you have, uh, different grouts, cements, um, chemicals, micro cements, which you could use, you can grout through, uh, through pack, as you can see on, on the picture. Usually the, you can grout with pressures up to 100 bars. The time is between 2 to 10 hours, depending on, on which kind of grout you, you, you use. If you have a very low uh, overburden, uh, you can also uh, do a low pressure uh, grouting curtain before starting. Before we go into the TBM part, uh, I have some very, very short examples. Uh, this is from uh, the Lurin Tunnel in Oslo, it's the uh, John Black Tunnel, uh, going beneath the uh, Urban environment, so it's systematically grouting the sun. The tunnel is only uh, approximately 1,000 meters. The board length of the probe, or the pre grouting holes is 23 meters. They have 44 uh, grouting holes, also some optional holes which you can see up, up on the top. Uh, they also have seven uh, holes in the face. The grouting pressure is they use in this situation is between 30 and 80 bars. Uh, this illustration, you can also see how uh, how it's performed. It's not very 
clearly visible, but they, they had it stopped for browsing around every you know, 11 meters. Another example, which we're going to go back to later, is uh, from the Valadana project in India. Um, this, this is just to illustrate how the drafting uh, umbrella can also be significantly smaller depending on the equipment you have. Then it's time for uh, our call, call question. And I'll hand it over to Dennis again. Okay, there's a full question we hope everyone answers. I'm going to uh, describe the application on drills on different sizes and types of TBMs and, and the implications of that. This slide shows uh, the uh, middle section of a typical seven. This one was about 7.2 meter open type main beam TBM. You can see the main beam here. The cutter head is in this area out of the photo. Uh, here you see a drill. There was a drill mounted on each side of the main beam on these slides. Uh, this size machine, we can mount two drills. If there was a very dense drilling pattern, it could be possible to mount more drills. In this size machine, the drills can be on a positioner that can position them vertically as shown here. For, for roof drilling, the positioner turns the drills horizontal or into a conical pattern so we can drill, drill reconnaissance holes or drill a conical pattern through the shield to pre-inject grout. Uh, future machines, uh, if there's a lot of grouting called out, it might be an advantage to put more, more drills on and cut down the drilling time. It's dependent on the size and type of the machine. We're going to have a video here showing the drills, uh, use of drills on a main beam TBM. Probe drilling can detect the ground conditions ahead of the TBM, such as fault zones or water. Probe drilling is typically performed to distances of 30 to 60 meters ahead of the machine. If weak ground is found, it can be pre-grouted to increase ground stability. relatively simple on a main beam TBM. There's quite a lot of room compared to other types of machines. Uh, it's important to have good working platforms if you have multiple drilling positions. Uh, the drill operators have to get to the drilling machine, have to uh, operate, exchange rods, see what's going on. Uh, after the holes are drilled, water inflow is checked, the drills are cleaned, packers are inserted, and grouting can commence if it's necessary. The packers are inserted, the drills are in a conical pattern. Uh, They're usually inserted two or three meters uh, from where the borehole enters the tunnel wall. They've got to get far enough in so when the grouting pressure is applied, it doesn't blow out the wall of the tunnel. There's some potential problems that, that uh, TBMs encounter in, in poor conditions if pretreatment is not done. Uh, in spite of the time taken for drilling, it could be a good investment. Uh, if you don't drill in free grout, you can run into very difficult conditions. Stuck machine, excessive downtime, and poor ground conditions. You can encounter challenging geology at the cutter head. We try to make the cutter heads go through anything. Uh, in a lot of ways they do, but there are some conditions where, they, where they're in trouble that would be very beneficial to have drilled and pre-treated. Blocky ground or, or uh, rock with clay if that could be grounded off, the machine's got a lot better chance to get through. If you don't pre-treat and get into trouble and try to uh, treat the ground afterwards, the machine structure in the cutter head is a big obstruction. It's difficult to get to the face and do any work after, after the damage is done. Describe uh, drills on different types of machines. Again, we talked about the main beam machine. The drills can enter the rock fairly close to the face. Uh, this is a double shield machine. Depends on the size of the machine. Generally, the drills enter through the gripper area, farther back through the face. Uh, this is kind of a hybrid machine called the ACT that I'll describe in a, in a later slide. 
Again, the main beam machine depends on the size of the machine, uh, what type of positioner, and how many drills we can mount. Usually we can get the drill powering into the rock pretty close to the face. Sometimes on very small machines, we have, we have to place the drill farther rearward, and we can't collar so close to the face. Shielded machines, the shield body is usually a little of equipment. Again, it depends on the size of the machine, but the shield body is usually full. It's difficult to get the drills mounted within the shield body. Sometimes we can do that. Sometimes we have to compromise on the size of the bearing or other, other specifications of the machine if we want to do that. Normally on shielded machines, the drills are mounted farther rearward, and they collar in through, through the gripper area in the case of a double shield machine. If you don't anticipate a lot of drilling, often we set up the, uh, the segment erector, which is right in the tail shield, so it can grip the drill and act as a drill positioner. Otherwise, we have a dedicated drill positioner that we can move forward and do the drilling. Uh, again, in comparison, open TBM, it's possible to drill fairly easily to reduce water inflow if you're encountering that. However, uh, Usually you're not putting up any permanent lining on, a, on an open type machine, so if you have an exposed area, if you don't drill in grout, that water can come in. There's no segments, no protection. But again, they're usually it's easier to drill and it's easier to provide some protection by drilling and grouting. On a shielded machine, at least behind the machine when you erect the lining, if you have casketed precast segments, the segments will seal off the water but the area in front of the machine is exposed. Uh, if there's high pressure water or high, very high water volumes, you can have problems with the, with the groundwater washing out the backfill grout behind the segments. This is uh, another video that we'll play uh, showing this hybrid machine, this so-called ACT machine, all conditions tunneling. Conditions Tunneler, known as the ACT machine, is the Robbins Company's latest innovation and is one of the most versatile tunnel boring machines available. The ACT can efficiently bore through a wider range of geology than any other hard rock TBM. The best defense is a good offense. One of the distinct advantages of the ACT is its excellent probing and grouting capability, which properly pre-treats rock ahead of the machine. Unlike other shielded TDMs, probe drills in the ACT machine enter the rock immediately behind the cutter head. When weak rock or water is discovered ahead of the TDM, holes are drilled using two high-performance rock drills. These holes are then filled with grout to solidify the ground or cut off water flow. Once the ground has been pre-treated in this fashion, the machine can efficiently advance through it. As a hybrid machine, the effort was to provide room for, for good drills so effective drilling could be done when needed within a shielded machine. As I mentioned before, uh, drills on TBMs are really not anything new. Uh, one classic example was a tunnel done in Oslo with a 3.5 main beam Robbins machine, uh, and it was, there were drills installed then in 1980. It did a very dense pattern of drilling and grouting, uh, but the new machines, the machines are more robust. The, the area within the tunnel is full of machinery. If drilling is necessary on a frequent basis, it's a matter of planning. The machine design might have to be adapted to allow easier drilling. Uh, the, the logistics of the drilling have to be planned ahead. The drilling can be done in an efficient and a, and a routine way when necessary. Drilling and grouting does consume time. Time is valuable in a tunnel. But if you look at the activities in a tunnel, the utilization of the machine, the machine, uh, the time, percentage of the time the cutter is actually, the cutter head is actually turning is usually about 35 to 40 percent. We'd like it to be higher, uh, but there's a lot of other slices in the pie when, when the cutter head is not turning. So the idea is to use that other time to do the drilling so you don't affect the utilization of the machine. Uh, probe drilling, if not planned properly, can be a fairly intrusive activity. It's moving machinery, 
the drills are very noisy. You have to be aware of the flushing coming 